All right, so welcome to my part two video on installing the Power Center 84, no, 8740 LIS in my Taxa Cricket 2021 model. Um, if you've just arrived at this video and you haven't watched the previous videos, you're going to be a little lost. What I'm doing is I'm installing a power center in my Taxa Cricket to enable me to charge lithium batteries. So this is part two of the video. Everything's already pulled apart and I'm putting the new one in. So I went ahead and started uh, stripping the wires. I don't really have any footage on that, but you just strip the wires if you have to. I took mine off so carefully that I hardly had to. I maybe had to strip two. So um, that helped a whole lot. All it was was just putting the connectors on there and uh, crimping them down and then just putting all the wires together basically. So this video is gonna walk you through what I did for the rest of that. Um, and if you haven't watched the previous videos and you wanna be caught up or know what's going on, just go ahead and do that. And um, let's uh, get this party started. All right, so I'm slowly putting the new one in here. I got it all wired up. What I actually did is I just laid on top of here for most of the wires. It can kind of sit there while you do them. And then uh, I uh, just had to hold it in there for that yellow one because it's a little bit shorter. So I just held it. Um, I kind of, oops, almost dropped it. Um, I kind of just held it by my knee and then kind of uh, worked on getting that attached to there. And what I did, I just used these uh, joiners right here, but you can always, I wouldn't recommend soldering, uh, soldering, but I got a soldering iron and I just didn't think that was a good idea in case you got to take it off again or take it out. This makes it a little bit easier to come out, but you know, just crimp them and make sure that they're tight on there and it should be fine. But again, not an electrician. Um, so let's see here. So that's about everything here. So what I'm going to do now is I've got to punch out these two holes, that and that, so that I can put in these two pieces from the old one right here. So punching those out and then I'll be ready to uh, route the wires, these wires here, through these holes and uh, we should be able to put the face on. All right, so uh, this is what came out of the old one. And as you can see, it's got these little clips here and that's what holds it into the hole. So what I did is that I just put a screwdriver through this end of it and I was able to just pry it out so you'll see when I put that in there this is the new one by the way so when I put that in the hole those little flare outs or whatever clips are gonna hold it in there so I'll just put that in there and push it into place same thing with the big one it's got the same kind of clips on the sides so put that in the back and push it in and then it clips right in. So that's done. And now I just got to route those wires in through that and then uh, get them grounded and neutraled and whatever else not. So that's about that. And then pop some fuses here from the old one and replace them and uh, we'll be in business. So uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so I ended up taking off these um, these connectors here, if you can see, there's this little piece that goes in inside that little V-shaped piece. And once upon a time, it's like a zip tie almost. I don't think there's a way of loosening it after you've tightened it. But once upon a time, it wasn't all the way in there. You had to put the wires in and then push down on it to clamp down on the wires. But now that it's like that, it's kind of being a pain trying to get that to remove. So what I've done is, I tried to put in the wires while they were plugged into that and that wasn't working. So I took them back out of the new one again. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the wires through like so before I put it into the hole. And then at that point, I can just plug it into the back. I think that's gonna be a whole lot easier, all right? So the problem with this wire is that it was a little the sheath here was a little bit frayed, so it wasn't going in very well. And it also has this wire and it's going into the small hole. These, all three of these wires, or all two of these uh, wires go into that. So I put some um, some electrical tape on it and kind of just tied them all together so it's nice and, uh, and neat. And that way, it'll be able to go in here a little bit easier without getting caught, kind of like so. 
and then I should be able to put that wire in as well. I, uh, having them both in there was gonna make it too thick, so what I'll do is that I'll put the wire, the white wire in because it's also a little bit shorter, and then after that one, I'm gonna then try to put this one in. So that should. All right, so I've got them through now, just like that, and I'm just gonna leave them like that and then uh, put the box over the wires and uh, see if I can do it with one hand. Okay, so now I'll be able to grab those wires and put them through the holes. I can't do it with one hand, but that's the process now. All right, so after messing with this for a while, I was actually able to pop this out. I had to grab some pliers and just pull on it, and then it does come out, but it was, uh, it took a little bit of trying. You kind of have to wiggle it back and forth as you're pulling it out, but it will come out. I don't think I'm gonna use it again because I don't think it's necessary because it's already so tight in there. Um, so I don't think it's necessary, or I may still put it in, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna go in very easy, not by hand anyway. So I'd need some kind of uh, some kind of tool to push it back to push it back in there again. And it's as loose as this one here, which has a clamp on it. So I don't really think it matters. Um, it's just nice to have it there so it can kind of guide the wires in there. Um, and yeah, that's about it. All right, so this is going pretty well. I got uh, the grounds in, including this. I've got the neutrals all in and tightened. And uh, now I just gotta put the 30 amp and the 215 amps on, and then this ground on the last one. and. And that should be about that should be about it. So I'm going to loosen this screw right here. This is the this also comes with one. I remember taking this off off the old one, but it also comes with one here, so you don't have to reuse anything. So I'm going to take this off and then um, clip those. Let's see if we can just do this in front of the camera here with the left hand. That's a 15, and another 15, oh, this is a 30, yep, there we go, 30. So it's actually easier for me to put the camera down and then attach this before I clip it in there, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach that wire that, uh, and this is the thick one, the thickest of the three. So you'll see this is uh, thicker than these two over here. So, that... All right, so this is the second one, and it's a little bit different from the third, as a matter of fact. The last one has two connections here, one for that uh, other cable, this cable right here, and then one for the one that's right there. So this one's a little bit different. It goes into the third position. Uh, on the far right towards closest to the fan. That's where this goes. So the way these attach, you can see there's a little lip right there and the bottom part of this hooks onto the lip and then you push it up and then that little connection right there slides in between, between that. And then the wires on this one go on a little different. So that's the clamp right there. So you put the wire through there and then you fasten that screw, and then that little U bracket um, goes up and uh, makes contact, and that's how you secure that. So, I'm gonna get it on. All right, so I had a couple of screws to just kind of hold it in place while I was doing the wires up front. Now that, that they're all done, or now that they're all done up here, I went ahead and just popped the screws out, and then I reached back here and I put these clips back in so that they actually fastened before they were just kind of hanging out up there. So I just pushed them down and then plugged them in. And then now I can put this on like so, making sure it doesn't pinch any wires. And then I can put the rest of the screws back in there and that should be it for that. And it's... It's replaced, just put some uh, fuses in there. So 
not too bad honestly not too bad at all so you just want to go through and check the screws again but let me put these screws in and then uh, we'll pick it up from there all right so i've got the screws back in all four of them and I put, I put the fuses in and this is the order of the fuses but i just took out one and replaced it here took out the next one and put it here i didn't take them all out put them into a cup and squish them around and then try to figure out where they go so um but since you got this video now you can just kind of figure it out but i just took them in and put them in one by one to keep track of them and then i've got this secured i put the screw up there so this is officially done i just got to put the face plate on there and i uh, should be able to wire my batteries after that and then turn it on and hopefully nothing blows up all right so this is the plate that goes over that and you can see it's just got these blanks in here so you can just um, break those off carefully looks like they just kind of push through but that's that and that'll fit over the face and just like that looks like it came from the factory I also forgot to mention, before you put this cover on, make sure just to go through the wires and make sure that they're all fastened down. Like, just check the screws and make sure they're pretty tight on there. Um, but uh, you don't want them falling out when you're off-road or something like that or just jostling loose over time. So, but uh, this is it. It is done. And I don't think they had any markings. I'll have to see if there, there were any markings in this. So they aren't any. So if they were, I would transfer those onto this. But uh, don't have to worry about that. And uh, so what does it say here? Lithium switch for certified. Oh, that's awkward. Lithium switch for certified technician usage only. Improper use may damage batteries and electrical system. All right. So I guess that is the difference up there. Um, let me see if I can show you guys. So you see that little switch up there that says on it on the left hand side, it says lithium or L I on the right hand side, it says L A, which I'm assuming is lead acid. So L I is lithium and L A is lead acid. So right now it comes in the one position, which is lead acid. So I'm going to switch that and put that in the on position and that's going to make it lithium. So I'll just put my finger, my fat finger in there, push it up. Now it's in the lithium position. So that's about that. Okay, as far as the batteries are concerned, I got this from Amazon. Let's see, it looks like a two piece, four gauge battery wire. So it comes with a negative and a positive. So I'm going to be connecting these in parallel so that it stays a 12 volt system. So that means I'm going to connect this from the positive to the positive and this from the negative to the negative right on my batteries in there and then um, i'm going to connect the positive wires which are these everything that goes to positive i'm going to connect that on the positive of one battery and then i'm going to take the negative which they should only be one wire because everything else connects to the shunt and i'm going to connect this to the negative on the other battery so the negative on one battery and the positive on the other battery and then these four gauge wires here negative positive to positive negative to negative and that's how that's set up all right so i've got it plugged into shore power now so i haven't turned it on yet right now all i did is i turned on the battery switch right there and these are still off so let's go ahead and plug in 30 amp. And now that's fired up. That's on, the fan's kicked on, so it's getting power. That's good. It's charging my lithium battery. Uh, before, if you remember, it was only ever going to 13.69. So that's going up. And we wanted to stop at like 14.2, 14.44, or something like that. So we'll see where it gets up to. So I just have the one battery right now. So what I'm going to do is that wait until that charges. And then I'm going to plug this in and charge it separate as well. 
and then after they're both charged, then I'm gonna connect them together. So I got these cables, which are just uh, about a foot, and that's not gonna be enough. I should have gotten the 18, um, 18 inch ones as opposed to this, uh, I believe 12 inch. So I'm gonna have to get new cables, so I'll just go back to Amazon and get those. So too bad I already opened these, but maybe I'll use them for something else in the future. So if you, when you're doing this, just because if you look in here, there's not enough room. Sorry, it's dark, but there's not enough room to run this from one battery to the other to do the parallel connection. So that's just not gonna work. And if you flip the battery the other way, then the posts are on the opposite side, which is fine if you're trying to have a 24 volt system, but to do a 12 volt, these two, need to be aligned. So positive, negative to negative, which is on this side, and positive to positive, you know, which is that side. So that's it for right now. Um, I'm gonna go and eat, cause I'm starving, but uh, let this charge for a while. And as you can see, it's still going up. So 13.81 now. So that should be able to charge us up to uh, the 14.2, 14.4 before too long. And then we'll come back, switch the batteries out or the terminals anyways, and put them on this one so that that charges as well. So when I put them in parallel, they're both at the same voltage, which is on maximum charge. So I don't know if it matters or not, but I figured why not. Okay. All right, y'all. So it's been a journey, but I'm now done charging up my batteries individually and making sure that they all synced. So if you look right here, you can tell that it's, it's charging, it went up when I was charging the battery, it went up to like 14 something, or but then it came back down again to 1370. And which I thought it had to be at 14.4 in order to, to know that the battery is fully charged. But after doing a little bit more research, these lithium batteries, anything from 13.7 to 14.4, is actually considered fully charged. So I guess these batteries are fully charged as they stand right now. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, well, I'm gonna plug them, I'm gonna hook them up in parallel. That's what's next. Um, so hook them up in parallel. I'm waiting for a cable that should be getting delivered any moment now, or a couple of cables. And I'm gonna hook them up in parallel. So if you look down here, initially I had one Battleborn 100 amp hour battery. Now, if you look in there, there's actually two. So um, I'm gonna disconnect that and uh, kind of reset them up in there so that they're in parallel. And then I'll show you how they charge. So this power center here, the lithium one, kind of does things a little bit different. Um, we already talked about that switch right there. Well, there's a switch right there where you can switch it from lead acid which is on this one and the lithium, which is on this on side up here. So if you flick that little rocker switch up, it's going to be in lithium mode. And when it's in lithium mode, it'll charge. When you first plug it in, it'll have two lights, right? To show that it's in bulk mode as it's trying to charge. So I'm not an electrician, but bulk mode is uh, the mode it goes into first to kind of, uh, get you that initial boost, you know what I'm saying? So let's say your battery was completely flat. You plug it in the first time, it goes into bulk mode and it pumps as much as possible in there. So the voltage goes up to 14.6, I believe it is. And then uh, it just gives you a faster boost from zero going up. And that mode can last anywhere from one to four hours, depending on the state of charge of the battery. So when it's doing that, um, there's two lights that are on. Right now, if you're looking at that, there's one light on the left and there's nothing on the right. When you initially plug it in, there's two lights, one on the right, one on the left. This one here indicates that it's in bulk mode. And uh, when that goes off and then just one is on, that indicates that it's in uh, absorption mode, which means the mode that it uses to just... Uh, like your battery is charged, right? And we're supplying enough power just so you can use your um, devices and whatever else not without depleting the battery. So just kind of like a par. Um, so it'll stay like that for the most part unless it goes into trickle charge mode or float mode or something like that. But 
Um, anyways, this is installed now and it wasn't bad at all. And I am not like, I've said this already, I'm not an electrician. I'm not good at this kind of stuff. So it's not like I'm a pro or anything like that. And I was able to take this out and put it, uh, take out the old one and put in a new one. So basically what I'm trying to say is if I can do it, just about, just about anybody can do it. So you just have to want to do it. So, um, I'm happier now. I know I've got a lithium charger here. I know it's kind of giving me the same numbers on the Victron display. Well, that I had on my lead acid, but that was 13.69, but that doesn't, I mean, it's 0.1 under, but whatever, right? I've got the appropriate charger, so I don't have to worry about damaging my batteries or whatever would have happened or getting 85 to 95% charge as opposed to 100%. And, um, I've got, uh, so I've got all that set up. So I am good and I am happy with that purchase and I'm happy to have this set up in an appropriate way. So um, I'll film the last bit when I run them in parallel just to kind of show you how they charge in. Or well, maybe actually I'll just do that in a totally different video. So this video has been about installing the power center. Um, and so I'll wrap that up. So, um, let me see. So, installation was super easy, guys. I, I think, well, I'm not going to say super easy, but it was, it was easy. You have to want to do it. You have to know how to kind of crimp wire or not crimp, but attach um, cables on wire. It's all color-coded, right? You just kind of put the green wire with the green wire, the red wire with the red wire. You have to have a wire cutter so you can cut wires or strip wires. Um, what else did I find useful? You gotta have a screwdriver, a flat screwdriver, one that's a little bit longer so you can reach in there. Uh, for some of the places, they you kinda need a, a long screwdriver. Or when you're actually removing these little uh, switches here, when you're removing the wire from them, they actually have a square bit. You know how this is flat? They're actually square. And I think it'll be very helpful to get that. I used a flat and it's okay because it's like a flat slash square. So it's actually set up to use a flat screwdriver or that little square bit, um, uh, square, uh, square uh, <laughs> screwdriver bit. Uh, that's a little bit more secure and it doesn't slip out while you're trying to turn it. This will kind of slip out and you have to kind of put pressure on it in order to make a flat screwdriver work. But I did it with one and it worked. But to make things simpler for you, I find that starting off with the right tools is a whole lot, uh, is uh, very helpful. So some of the other things I used are all up here. Um, let's see, I've got some pliers here, like a big set of pliers that I use to kind of remove some of the uh, attachments that were that were already there. Um, so just to kind of grab on them and pinch them again and take out that crimp so I can pull the wire out. So I use that for that. And then let's see what I have here. I also had a Phillips screwdriver. You'll need that. That's just that one with the star uh, or the, the four corners or whatever. Phillips. And then I had some wire cutters, you know. Um, let's see. And then for my battery terminals, I had, you know, like this is a size uh, half inch uh, socket. So then I also had some of these at half inch. This is actually cool because it's adjustable on one side. The problem with the terminals, the way they're set up right now and where you're going to want to put them, is that there's really not a lot of room to try to do that. So at the end, you kind of end up having to use this side instead of the ratcheting side. So getting these terminals on for me was actually pretty challenging. Right now they're not on, they're kind of half on because I'm actually removing them to uh, set up the parallel batteries, which I'll, I'll do another video on that. But um, that's what that looks like in there. So I used one of these and that's painstaking. That's just gonna suck, but you'll get it done. Um, what else do we have? I think that was about everything that I used. Oh, no. So check it out. So you'll need a bunch of these, right? Um, so just like some connector kits. 
and uh, I just have a set of a bunch of them. Get some big ones as well because you'll need some big ones because of the, the wires. Like you see these little red ones over here, they don't work for a good number of the wires, uh, neither do those blues. So having the yellow ones, which are slightly bigger down there, was pretty helpful. I also have a voltmeter here uh, just to kind of uh, um, check the batteries to see if uh, that was reporting the same um, voltage as this would report and it was the same so this is just the model that I have I'm not recommending it or not recommending it but um, if you want to get exactly the same one it's an Innova auto ranging plus digital multimeter so that's what that is um, I also have this box here I've had this for a while but you can see it's got the wire strippers in there that's that with the yellow handle and a bunch of other little electrical doohickeys in there. I also have a soldering iron, even though I didn't end up soldering the wires because I figured I would wanna maybe take them out one day, but this is a nice little kit to have when you're working on stuff like that, just so you've got everything that you need. So I think that's the range of the tools that I used. You can also do a drill. I think I've got or a driver or some sort. I just got this. Ryobi, Ryobi one, and that's kind of helpful. So you're not sitting there trying to turn screws all the time. Just be careful using the big ones when you're doing it because you don't want to strip anything because this is just wood. It's not reinforced with anything. So driving in the screws to this, I like to hand tighten them. That way I'm not just stripping them if you do a, a super powerful drill um, or something like that. But um, I think honestly, that's about it. Uh, I hope that you if you want to do the same thing I hope this is helpful uh, like I said don't be afraid of doing this it's really 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 not that bad at all and put a put a comment in my comment section I'm more than happy to help you if you're trying this and you're like oh what am I gonna do if I struggle message me I'm usually um, pretty good at responding to these things because I've been helped by watching videos on here before so I want to make sure I give back so if you're struggling with something um, just uh, reach out and uh, when I see it I'll uh, respond and uh, that brings us to the end of the installation of the power center 8740 LIS from WFCO um, I'll see you on the parallel battery installation which is what I'm working on right now so I'll film a little bit when I do that and uh, I'll post it till then